Hey guys, Bumble Breeze here with Combiner Wars Ultra Magnus. Now first, I want to thank Adamantium Matrix for donating this figure to me. And with that all said, let's get straight into this review. So, here he is in his vehicle mode. Now, he is a semi-truck, similar to the original G1 toy. The front of the cab is a little bit smushed down, but I can get used to that. The back is a very, very detailed sporting a lot of small sculpted in detail you can fold down these back panels and it actually is a little drive up thing that you can take one of the legends figures and even some of the deluxe class figures and you can drive them up inside there and they completely clear the roof so as you can see we have minimus ambus and uh brawn inside here and you can even take uh other guys like Bumblebee and you can put Bumblebee on top there you get to see him and yeah I just think that's pretty amazing oh one more thing you can if you want to if you don't like the whole cab like that you can push it in if you want to save displaying room if you don't have that big of a uh, place to display your figures but if you really wanted to and you have like a diorama or something you can have him driving into battle and have like one guy sitting on the top manning this gun or something like that it's just there's so much playability with him so so much now here's minimus ambus and uh i'm just going to talk about the scaling between minimus ambus and this guy himself ambus and all of his little tiny glory now he is supposed to be a little car and he is a little car, but if that was a real semi scaled to, to a car, that would be a go-kart. Man, he is so small, but in order to use all of his playability, he's going to have to be small. Now, his transformation is fairly simple. You fold the legs out, like so. Unpeg the arms. And on a pivot, this chest lies. Oh, yep, there the oh, there the legs go. He does fall apart a really lot, as you can tell, but he's on ball joints, so you just plug him back in like that. And here he is in his, his robot mode. His least strong mode, in my opinion. He does sport a lot of nice sculpted detail in the chest, and his shins are pretty nice looking as well. I mean, those are some nice, nice shins, considering they were a car hood. And yeah, the red eyes, which is kind of weird because he's an Autobot, but eh, whatever. Let's take him and move him over here and focus on the big guy for one last time. And we'll just do a complete 360 before we put him into robot mode. Now that we did that, let's put him in robot mode and see what he looks like. So... Here he is in robot mode, my favorite mode, personally. He does have posable hands, which is a very rare thing to see inside Transformers toys that aren't masterpieces, or third parties. Third parties, those those things are just really expensive in my opinion. Uh, nice detail on the legs that carried over from robot mode, I mean vehicle mode. Uh, all that little sculpted detail is still in there, it makes the figure look really, really nice. The chest has the best paint out of most Transformers toys, in my opinion. It, the red is just so red. The blues are so blue. That Autobot symbol tampographed on there is so great. They actually painted in those little chrome things right there. It's just amazing. Plus, here are the two weapons that he comes with. That one and this one right here. Which we will take out so you guys can see, have a better look at. They do turn into a hammer. But uh, if you guys really want to go see the hammer, go to Adamantium Matrix's video on this gun. Uh, he literally showed everything off, and I'm kind of taking some of the things that he showed off in his video and putting them in my video. By the way, the ports to plug them in are right there and right there. Let's take some comparisons. So here is Generation Springer next to this guy. The two fellow movie bots with their master, master, mastery looks going on. I don't even know what that means. Probably doesn't mean anything. But, yeah, he's got the sword, he's got the gun. They just look so good together. Uh, they both are based on IDW Publishing's comic books, 
I'm pretty sure that Springer is as well. But Springer does have a little bit different things going on him. He has more painted details and isn't just like multiplastic like that. All the stuff on his arms. The only thing that I can see that's painted really well is his head. Like the mask part of his head and the chest. Besides that, uh, I don't even know what's really painted and what's not really painted. Uh, here's another comparison. Here he is oh, next to Metroplex. And yeah, Metroplex can't fit inside here, but Metroplex's head is just about this much taller. And if you think about it, Metroplex's guns make him a lot taller than he actually is. Let's just show you guys real quick. There they are side by side. I'm going to put this down. But... Uh, <laughs> this guy's really big when you consider that Generation 1 Metroplex, not being a super big bot, but a pretty big bot for the time, is that, that much bigger than him? Like, literally, I think that's about three or four inches, and if you count Ultra Magnus's arm things, they are about the same height, which is crazy. I mean, this figure is massive. Uh, these Legends guys, nah. This guy, yeah. He's just amazing. Ah, uh, okay. Now with that said, let's take this guy out of here. So, I want to know how you guys like this review so far, and if it captured everything that you did not know about Ultra Magnus. Now there is a new Siege version out, and it's 2G1 in my opinion. It has all the battle damage and like the sculpted detail on that. I'm just not a big fan of it myself. But yeah, uh, so yeah, I just want to thank Adamantium Matrix for making this review possible, guys. This has been Bumblebreeze flashing off. Bye, guys.